welcome to Beauty and the Beat. It's your girl Amanda with you and I've got my wonderful co-host Chandra with me and right in the middle there is the wonderful hot pizza ass Miss Erin <laughs> Darling, the one and only. Erin and I go back like 10 years and this woman does everything in Hollywood. She's an actress, she's a comedian, she's a host and at the moment I think she bakes a lot of pizza as well and you know <laughs> in a positive way. So Erin, welcome to Beauty and the Beat. Hello you guys, thank you so much for having me. This is a lot of fun. I know, I don't know what- I have a feeling you're gonna make it even more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I could use some belly laughs. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, Chandra, you're missing from the stream. <laughs> oh. Huh. It looks fine on my end. Uh, you, can you guys hear me okay and see me okay? We can't see you, but I guess you're a part of the stream. If you can see both of us, I guess some way it's going to bring you back and Maybe in the final recording edited version, you will be there, but I just can't. Okay, I do see a red dot and I know this is a new um, system for us. So I see a red dot. Hopefully that means I'm recording. But going back to Miss Darling, Erin, welcome to Beauty and the Bee. <laughs> Thank you guys. I love this podcast. I've been listening to it a lot because I think, I think I saw something on your Instagram, Amanda, and I was like, this seems like something I would really, really enjoy um, the guest on that particular episode. And then I liked that episode so much that I've just been binging it all week. I really liked the last episode with the pussy power and that long, really awkward like exercise with the moaning. My boyfriend came over. And I was like listening to it as I was cooking us dinner. And it was like, oh, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> He's like, what are you listening to? I'm like, I'm listening to a pussy priestess, okay? <laughs> That's I don't think he would complain. <laughs> He's just like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, we, we have the, the most amazing, awesome guests. I mean, that brings so much flavor to the show. And, you know, I think that part of it is just, you know, this is just us girlfriends talking, right? You know, and that's what we wanted to create is just a fun way of people learning more about people, what they're doing and, you know, how it helps people level up in their own lives. Mm -hmm. It's important yeah. to have those conversations for sure. And yeah, and that's why I was excited to have Erin on today because, um, you know, well, we've been here in this Hollywood thing for a while and, you know, we've been leveling, leveling up our lives. <laughs> so today we're going <laughs> to talk about all that. We're going to talk about branding, personal branding, which Chandra and I talk about a lot. We're going to talk about career moves that Erin's making in, you know, in her life that we're making. And we just want to make this a real girl powered theme we, we, let's talk a bit about body image and all those type of things like because I know on your podcast you talk a lot about body image and you know and I'm so glad that Hollywood is changing the idea of you know like uh, that everyone's got to be perfect so that's great so Erin um what have you been up to lately I mean well what a year right <laughs> Oh, um, I have been trying to stay safe and healthy primarily. And then beyond that, you know, reassessing my relationship with everything because this has been a really good growth opportunity because how often do we get the chance to just pause? I think at least like Amanda, from what I know of you and, and Chandra, I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to assume that all of us are very busy people that just go, 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 go. And sometimes you're just, you realize you can be like a year on a path without really stopping to ask yourself, is this really fulfilling to me? Am I really happy doing this? But it might be good for your career or it might be, you know, a collaboration with someone that is powerful that you like, or it might give you money. But I think what this year has really taught me is listening to my heart and my gut on things and having that pause really, really helped me tap into that, which is amazing. A lot of my friends call it a sacred pause. You know, it really is a time to, like you said, tap in where it, it, we have to meet our goals and so we'll go, go, go. But if we don't stop and listen to what's authentic, whether it's going the direction we really want it to go, we can start to live life a little bit by default. You know, whatever comes to us and we're just in a reactive mode. You know, I think this gives us that opportunity to say, what do we really want and what does that mean to go for it? Because it may mean making some pivots. 
Yeah, you know what's so funny is I think that a lot of people like when they make life changes, it's like something bad happens or they rock bottom or they lose a job or maybe even you could be on a path that's serving you in certain ways but not 100%. And I think that that's kind of the lesson that I've had to learn is that we could be easily doing something by default and it's not even a bad thing. It could just be not the right thing, not your soul's purpose. That's right. I actually, I was just in a training about identifying your soul's purpose. Really? And it's interesting that you use that word. Yeah. I'm in I'm in a program called Embodied Mystery School. And we talked a lot about that. And, and it's some of it is what you decide for yourself as opposed to some magical force that's bestowed on you, you know. Because if you don't have that feeling, then you don't want to feel like you're deficient because you don't have a soul's purpose. You know, it's really something that you can choose for yourself and that you can continue to change it as you need to course correct in, in life. And it doesn't mean it's a failure. It means that there was some learning along the way that got you to a new place. It's like climbing that mountain and seeing the first vista and then realizing, oh, if I go over there, I can, you know, have a shortcut to this other vista. And you just can't see, you can't see that until you get there. So you're right. It's not a failure to change course. It actually means you're listening to yourself and you're co-creating, you know, a journey that makes sense for you. I yeah, I think um, you guys talking about the corona and how it's affected us um, this year and how it's just made people be more like, I think it's made a lot of people focused but also there's a lot of people that have got kind of frazzled with the whole thing like you know most people ask me about they say how was corona you know how was 2020 for you and they always expect you know you're gonna say oh my god it was terrible you know and i'm like 2020 was one of my best years actually because apart from the fact that a lot of people died and all of that which is really bad news you know but for me personally it was a time when i really took time to think what am i doing why am I doing, just like Aaron said, why am I doing what I'm doing? What do I really want out of my life? What is my goal? And it also caused me to start living my life urgently, you know, because, you know, in LA, because we've got sunshine in California all the time, the years kind of roll into one, you know, like, it's like, oh my God, it's 2021, oh, 2022, 20, and you're just there and it's just going because the seasons are not really, you know, identifiers of the year. So. I all, all of a sudden I thought you've got to live urgently. You've got to have all those goals, all those big unattainable things you think are not achievable. Why not just go for them? And who gives a F, you know what I mean? Just do it, you know? And from that, I also realized that a lot of times we are always looking for people to validate us, you know? So whether you're, especially in our profession in entertainment, it's like, okay, you're an actress, you're this, you're a model, you're that. And you're like almost feeling like an imposter sometimes because you feel like, well, I'm not an actress until I win an Oscar or I'm not an actress until I'm in a TV series or I'm not at this until I'm that. But that's not true. That's not true because you know, there are actors that act on stage, there are actors, there are actresses that act there, there are TV hosts that are doing podcasts, there are TV hosts that are doing Amazon things, you know, and it's, it was just for me to like really start identifying that, stop waiting for this big something, which you don't even know what it is, you know, just go for it and do what you do, do what you like doing, hence we're on the podcast. And yeah, that was 2020 for me. <laughs> I want to hear from Aaron on that. I just want to squeak in one thing, which I heard this interview with the Goalcast guys, and they're really amazing at, at doing these social media videos and telling these authentic stories that are really moving for people. And and the I, the the topic of credibility came up, and what they said was the videos that start off with you know all that you're that you think would make you credible, like I have an MBA and I have this and that aren't what connect people to you in terms of your credibility. A lot of times, just your life experience, like your willingness to be authentic and and share something real that happened, they're not going to doubt that because they, they know that you're telling the truth from your experience and that there was some life lesson there and that when you're eight, when you and in a place where you are willing to disclose that, people just assume credibility. And it's not that you don't have all those things, but you, not to put all these, you know, uh, roadblocks in front of you saying, oh, I have to get that MBA before I can be credible, or I have to, you know, get that Oscar, you know, first. Instead, it's just like, we're worthy just because we were born, you know, and we're having life experiences. And I thought that was a beautiful thought. 
Yeah, that's really great. I really like that a lot. I think that there's also something to it. And this is something I kind of talk about a lot on Hot Pete's Ass podcast. You know, I feel like when I started tapping more into my vulnerability more than like perhaps my resume, Mm-hmm. I it kind it worked for me like it was a gamble that <laughs> paid off because it's scary and that's why I call it a gamble because you don't want to get up on a mic and do your first two episodes of a podcast talking about body image issues or the fact that you know like I had an eating disorder or something like that like I don't want to I never wanted to lead with that kind of stuff but I think like pivoting into the work that I'm doing now and being honest about the experiences that I've had and also seeing a lot like the cultural zeitgeist is changing so much that it's kind of like it's a whole different thing and now people are like actually embracing their authenticity and their truth even the dark sides and integrating that into what they do and the work that they do and the message that they spread And I think that's so cool because, you know, like Amanda, when we met like 10 years ago, that was, I would have never, that was not me at that time, you know? (laughs) And I'm just so glad that I feel free enough to do that. Do you guys have experiences like that? Um, I think I have experienced, I mean, I even, you know, it's funny because when you said when we met 10 years ago, that was not you. That's how I feel about myself. And I think that's how Chandra probably feels about herself 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Because it's so funny because... You know, I look at the things, especially the obstacles that have happened in my life, and I think, thank God for them, because without them, I would not be the person I am today and be able to be here today and to have the confidence and all that. And you start realizing that a lot of the things that you actually think were obstacles have made you grow so much and you're a total different person from who you were then, you know, and it's just amazing. I agree. I, I I differ a little bit in terms of how I look at myself. I mean, I think I might be a little older than both of you being 50, but I think that what for me, I look at myself as um, on this journey of, you know, self-improvement. And so it is a version of myself. Like I still claim it as myself and I don't think, oh, that wasn't me. I still, you know, I, I think it's just more that I'm a more sovereign person. I'm more, I become more of myself. You know, I, I think I've um, tapped into the ability to have the strength and the courage to be vulnerable or to be able to be authentic. And I think in entertainment, that is what actually has seemed to be the thing that resonates the most with people. You know, Aaron, you going out with your real story is going to connect with people on a deeper level than, you know, just just entertaining them with, you know, something funny or something. It's like, it's it may even be funny, but it's based in reality. It's based on something they can totally identify with and, and potentially relate to if they went through it themselves. Yeah, you know what's funny is when I was doing comedy all the time, and of course, like, the pandemic has changed all of that, but when I was doing stand-up, I kept being told like to reject my femininity basically to like be less of a girl he won't people won't listen to you you won't be taken seriously like the guys girlfriends in the audience aren't gonna like you if you wear a dress and you have to be like a guy so like I kind of rejected that part of myself and would go on stage wearing like jeans and combat boots and flannels and stuff like that and I bought into that idea. I believed the people that were saying this because, you know, they've been doing this for longer than I have. Like, I'm sure they know. And it's so weird, like realizing the parts of me that I was like, no, that's that's not acceptable. That's not me. And this is going to be me now. And kind of like where I'm at now, just integrating all of it. And I remember at one point I was talking to another female comic and I was like, I'm here on stage, I'm like wearing jeans and and combat boots, but like I feel I'm really sensitive. I'm a sensitive soul (laughs) and feeling like I couldn't be that as a comedian, you know, that I just like (laughs) and now it's like with the podcast, I get to do all of that. And then I get to like collaborate with, you know, women like you that also do these similar things and talk about similar things and also are interested in, you know, the holistic approach to being a person. And I think that's kind of awesome. I always admire people who just don't give any fucks, right? Like they just (laughs) don't care that, you know, if they want to wear a skirt, they wear a skirt, you know? And I think it's so wonderful to hear that you've embraced that, you know, all uh, those aspects of yourself because as we get older, we have to have a balance of the masculine and feminine energy. We can't override, you know, one over the other or we we can get out of balance. And as, as 
actual females, you know, to, to listen to, to the patriarchy about that is sending us down the wrong road and we don't even know it because we're just wanting to trust, you know, but ultimately the trust has to come from within. So that's so great that you were able to find that for yourself and be able to go, this isn't feeling right to me. This isn't who I am. I'm not going to just, you know, be a guy. I'm not a guy. I'm not going to be a guy on stage or whatever. Yeah, yeah you know who... Really... Go on, Erin. Go on. Oh, I said, um, I was just going to say, you know, the people that were giving me that advice, you want just want to guess how many of them were successful women? <laughs> right? None. Right? None. None of them. Yeah. yeah. They're all men. No. Like, I think well, that's another... That's why Amanda and I are so committed <laughs> to doing this to help other women, right? We're really... That's one of the um, major areas where our paths aligned and our... And our um, value system, you know, is that it's a non-competitive approach to, you know, supporting and helping women and through our own life lessons and encouragement and, you know, empowerment and all that type of stuff. Because yeah, you know, we don't always have that growing up and, and we need it from each other to know that, you know, it's not, we're not just going to be competitive. There's, I, I think it's, it ties into abundance mentality. There's enough success for all of us to be awesome, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and I think, um, you know, and I, I think in general, we are realizing that in the world, because especially with digitalization of everything, that we've realized that there's so much opportunity for everyone. You don't need any, I, th I felt like before people felt like the avenues to success were limited. So because of that, people felt like, oh, if Erin's on the way and I, no, 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 I've got to get there first. But now it's like, you can sit in your living room and even if, you know, you can broadcast yourself out to the world and you will find your tribe. You will find the people that want to listen to you, that get, you know, knowledge or they get inspired by what you have to say. You will find those people. So I feel like, especially in today's world, as women and men, we're learning to work together in a more cohesive way because we realize that the opportunities are out there for everyone. You can be in Africa as long as you have internet and you can broadcast yourself or set up an e-commerce business or, you know, no matter what it is, you can do it. You can become your own expert from your own in your own little world and in your own little ecosystem. And if anybody thinks you should fit into a round hole and you're a square, why should you fit in that round hole? Just go find people that like squares that want to fit into square holes or like that like squares that fit in round holes. I mean, I don't know, but you know, I mean, it's like, it's such a different. There's a lot of opportunity for entrepreneurs, you know, and I think that that's the greatest thing about the internet is that it's, it's leveled a lot of the playing field. And if you're not successful, um, it may be that you have to look at what you're doing or not doing, as opposed to there's limited, you know, resources or limited um, abundance, you know, of, of like only certain number of people can be successful. So if you're not one of those, then, you know, it's the, it's the outside world. No, it's what you create, what you co-create anyway. And there, and the, the, the platform's available. So that's, you know, where I think, where I think we all probably align is knowing that we're, we have to create some of our own reality when it comes to this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree with that. I love hot pizza ass like that. Just that name is that would, I think people are going to be like, I want to know more about that. You know, how did you come up with that name? Well, I mean, it's all started with an Instagram post. Basically, this was maybe two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. I um, had this idea because I love puns and I was like, oh, my gosh, hot pizza ass. I should take a picture of me with a slice of pizza on my butt like it's like a bikini bottom, you know, and uh, just post it on Instagram and say I'm hot pizza ass or whatever. That would be hilarious. And here's the deal. I took the picture <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like. Jesus. And I tried to pick the right type of pizza, like the big enough slice to cover my butt, but it was still kind of scandalous. Um, and it was, and it was my body and I don't post, like I post bikini pictures, but I don't post like that was more of my body than like anyone had seen in a public way. And I kind of felt I'm going to get judged for this. I had all that patriarchal judgment like in, internalized inside myself. I'm judging my own picture, my own image. I was like, I'm going to get dragged. I'm going to get made fun of. I'm not going to be taken seriously. 
and like, do I look like crap? All of this stuff. And I sat on that picture for months. Like I didn't post it. I was too afraid to. And then eventually I just got to this point where I was like, you know what? Why am I afraid to post this? And when I started really thinking about it, I was like, that's the post. That, that's what I'm going to say. And so when I finally got, you know, the, the pussy power up to post it, <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> it was basically like, this is my body. I'm choosing to love it. You know, it's, it wasn't always that way, but like I'm choosing to love it every day, no matter what it changes every day. It's always different. And I'm a hot pizza ass. And I knew there was going to be some people that didn't even get that far in the caption. But the people that read it, it resonated. And it became my most popular post on Instagram, also my most hated. I lost 100 followers that day. And the, how polarizing that one image was, even with myself, with my own process, my thought process before <laughs> and after posting it, I also archived it three times, so I'm still kind of afraid of that post, <laughs> made me realize that there is something there that needs to be talked about. That was triggering for me. It triggered other people. And I just knew I needed to explore it. I just felt called to do it. And it's also a great name for a podcast. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go on this journey and do a solo podcast and just do this. And everything kind of worked out for that to happen. And now I'm in season three, which is amazing that I've been able to bring, you know, for three seasons worth of content, people that can talk about, you know, whether they've had body image issues or not, but they can talk about any obstacle that they've had to overcome to become who they are. And it's not the same for everyone. So it's expanded a little bit, but that's kind of where it all came from. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. And I've realized everyone has their hot pizza ass moment and their hot pizza ass journey. And so I know it started out as like a completely silly pun, but I, there's a whole world there, you know? <laughs> But that's what I love about it, that there's depth to it. There's an actual story behind it because exactly. in itself, it's kind of funny. And, and yeah, when you say it out loud, there is that, you know, um, that pun there uh, and that people may just look at hot piece until they say it out loud. They don't realize there would be like piece of or, you know, pizza instead of piece of. But um, I think it's brilliant. And I, I do you find that a lot of men are attracted to that name? Like they what do they think they're going to get when they get there? <laughs> You know, what's so funny is I was worried about that. And I, I think that some people, when I tell them that that's the podcast name, if they don't know the podcast or they don't know me or they don't like look at the Instagram or understand like what I'm actually promoting and talking about, people just appreciate the pun. And I'm sure there's some people that expect it to be a little more risque than it is. But this isn't like one of those podcasts where I'm like talking with my girlfriends, like how, how to give a blowjob. Like it's not at all yeah. like that type of vibe. And so I think that like in the market, the pod marketplace, people sometimes expect that. And then they're probably disappointed when they hear me talking about like self-love and shit. They're like, oh, this is like not what I want. Well, every guy I know likes pizza and asses. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it, it's a brilliant name. And I'm, I'm so, so happy that it's, it's become so successful for you. And, and I think it's a name yeah. that people remember, too. It's very, it's such a great brand. We were wanting to talk about personal branding and I think this really dovetails into that well. Yeah, I think- Let's yeah, talk about branding. That's something I never know how to do yeah, <laughs> for my own. I, I can do it for my it. projects, but not for my Aaron, personals. I think you're really good at branding. I, I think you're really good at branding. You know, I admire all your branding. I, I mean, I look through some of your stuff online and I'm like, oh my God, she's so well branded and your website and everything. And how you, I, I mean, do you do the artwork? Is, I mean, not do the artwork, but do you art direct these things yourself? Because I, I love the way you, you know, like you just, it's all cohesive. Yeah, you know, that's, it's kind of cohesive by accident. Um, I have a really good team of people that I hire because I'm not a web designer and I'm not an artist. So people that have done, you know, the, the stuff that I use, you know, my merch or, you know, my Instagram key art 
or my website, you know, like that's all other people that are doing that. I can't really take credit for it. But I think that there's an energy that reads because for me, I feel like, oh, wow, I just have like a collection of all the stuff that I've been working on. But there's a cohesive energy, I think. So that's why for me, it feels all over the place. But maybe for you, if you go to my website or my socials, it makes more sense and tells the story because it's very me. And I think because I've like moved on from the part of me that I felt was, you know, when I was a boy doing stand up or when I was like a super feminine pageant girl trying to be a size two all the time. Like now that I've moved on from that, like those like images aren't as much part of my story. So it's more of like, I think that's a really important thing about branding too, especially because like when you're in this industry for a long time, you have tons of content. It's like, no, 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 make sure your story is your now story. Like let's stay in the present. Like what is it now? Like let's stop using stuff from forever ago or whatever. Whenever I go to someone's page, I don't know, I would love to hear what you guys think about this. Whenever I see someone's page and it's all, it all feels like a TBT, to me that like is a red flag of an unhappy person. Do you guys ever have that experience? Uh, but I think part of it is just because, you know, they're trying to regurgitate content because sometimes people don't have content and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do some, you know, we all do it like, but it's not like the whole page, you know, but every now and then you're like, oh, shit. I mean, at least for me, I'm like, oh, shit, what am I going to post? I haven't posted this week. Oh, let's give them a TVT. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I think. You know, it may dovetail into a, a conversation about aging gracefully, you know, like some people might want to continue using the older stuff because they're like, my newer stuff isn't like maybe what, for whatever reason, they're not comfortable with, you know, they think it's going to, they look better. They looked better back then or something. But I, I think that it gets back to that authenticity conversation. It's like, you know, we're all growing and aging and, and you, there's still a lot of beauty in who we are. Exactly. Because even when Erin was talking, Chandra, one thing I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, because you were talking about the hot pizza ass and the whole, you know, thing. And I wanted to dovetail into body image because I think body image is a huge, huge thing now, especially for the younger folk, because growing up now, if I was like 18 years old and almost everybody on Instagram is in a bikini looking like Kim Kardashian, mm -hmm. the amount of pressure that must place on teenagers and young people, you know, young, you know, young adults today that like, I mean, and I remember seeing an Instagram video once where this mother walks into a room and she caught her daughter on Instagram in a bikini like, cause she walks in and her daughter's filming herself on Instagram doing a live and the mm -hmm. mother goes, what the hell? And she just hits her and, uh, and the whole thing was filmed and it was like on the live on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I kind of understood the reaction from the mother because, you know, what, you know, like if I, you know, you wouldn't want to walk in finding your 17 year old sister or daughter, you know, just like thinking that she has to be half naked on Instagram to kind of validate herself you know and it's all has to do with body image and um yeah so i wanted to find out what you guys think about the well, I, about the video I, or just in general in general whatever you know like it's just like um because it's still a thing it's still well a thing. studies have shown that social media although it is supposed to make it easier to connect actually makes it harder and it's connected to self-esteem issues and also depression i think that's something that we don't know the full impact of because you know just like everyone out here anti-vaxxers saying well this vaccine hasn't been in a human body we don't know exactly how this is going to go check yourself and ask yourself if you're on instagram every day because the impact of instagram on your like mental state, it's the same thing. Like we are consuming, whether it's a vaccine, whether it's food, whether it is content, every day we are consuming stuff that is not good for us. Not to say that the vaccine is not good. I am completely vaccinated and I think it's good for people, but just wanted to clear that up. I just think that we are not really, we don't know what the implication is gonna be for this, for the future generations or for us, and especially not for the young minds that are entering adolescence in these formative years, measuring themselves, judging themselves, comparing themselves to their peer group in ways that don't matter, like likes or physicality or how many, you know what I mean? Like how hot is your selfie and things like that that are think, I don't know, I just think it's 
completely detrimental if you really, really break it down. Well, as a parent of a teenager, I feel like it's a great teaching moment to start to teach about finding validation from within. Um, it, there's there's so many stories and there's documentaries and films like Screenagers and other play, things that you can watch that talk about the detrimental effects of social media and how, um, especially with all these filters and like how people can show up a certain way on Instagram and other you know social platforms and and not really look like that in person you know um, and then or or how like you said how many likes you get. Uh, you know, or if somebody says something derogatory that you can take it as reality, like, oh, you know, maybe I am that way or whatever. But as they're building their self-esteem, um, I think it is really important for parents to get involved and use tools like those documentaries and stuff to have conversations with their kids about it. Because, um, in fact, I have a, a, a single mom who found out her daughter was, you know, doing, showing her breasts and some things and she put her into therapy and they ended up having all this conversation around it. And, you know, a lot of it stemmed from, um, you know, the daughter needing that validation from outside sources as a way of kind of seeing herself. Like, you know, it's almost like a, they're looking for a mirror. They're looking for a reflection, like who am I and what is my value? And that they, they, they need to find it from within and, and with the, the trusted sources that are in their real lives as opposed to online. And uh, when they go to seek it online from their peer groups, that um, it can be a harsh reality. And so it, it's an interesting conversation as a parent. I think it's really important to have that directly with your kids and, and you know, talk about all that and that temptation to show yourself that way you know, because your friends are or whatever, but how it doesn't mean you're going to, these, these, the opposite sex or the same, so whatever you're into is going to like you more, you know, if in fact there could be some negative repercussions for attracting people based on just how you look alone. But a big thing, Chandra, I think is how did we get here? Because all of a sudden we're fully clothed. And the next thing I know, we're half naked on Instagram, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Well, how did we get here? You know, I mean, is it like, you know, one minute, like, you know, like um, 10 years ago, we were still fully clothed. And then all of a sudden now we're naked. I mean, it's like, is it Kim Kardashian? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't blame her. I think so many people are doing it, you know. I mean, I was just in Hawaii with my son and he, some girls from his school were there and he was showing me what they were posting live. Like we, we knew they were on the beach and he was showing me these pictures and they were like Victoria's Secret models, you know, but they're like 13 or 15, I think. And I'm, I'm just, I couldn't believe it. And I think that um, girls can sometimes have fun doing it with their friends and it makes it okay that their friends are doing it too. And so they'll get into this whole thing and then they're getting this positive. It's like a dopamine or oxytocin hit when you get liked by somebody you, you know, or, or, you know, somebody says a positive comment and so it can feed back into that. Um, but yeah, I think that there's a lot of dynamics that brought us here. It, part of it is that if so many people are doing it, then it's acceptable or that it's expected. You know, yeah. I think what that every think generation it? too has its own version of moral panic, especially when it comes to like youthful sexuality, right? Like think about Elvis, you know, like <laughs> Elvis was a big controversy. Like there's always some type of moral panic that we always have about like our teens becoming sexualized. And I understand the concern about that because that is a scary time and it's like they're getting independent and there's like less super supervision and situations that they're in so I think it's like a just a society thing that's gonna this is our version of that right now the only difference is that we have our phones and they can share that with people and I think that's where it's kind of a little bit different and that's where we get into that sticky territory that I was kind of talking about before in terms of you know the implications of posting something like that that's going to be on the internet forever when you're 13. Well, and that's a good thing for parents to share with their teens too, is that, you know, when you put something out there, you have to just assume that it is out there forever. So, you know, think of your future self and whether, you know, you're going to want that later because it's, it's, even if you try to delete it, 
somebody might have snapped it, somebody, you know, something, it, it's, it's on the internet. So to just be mindful about that. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Chandra, because, you know, that also, you know, segues into branding because that's part of branding. You know, I never used to think about branding so much like that, you see, because when you said that, now it made me it just it, it triggered something in my head because you know normally when it came to branding i'm the person you know i just like to put everything out there blah or just do this blah but you know you do have to be careful because that becomes part of your brand if that image is on the internet forever and you're creating this other brand and then someone brings the image out and they're like okay this is her and this is what she was up to you know that could really really affect your brand and i'm beginning it's only now after all my years in entertainment that I'm even beginning to look at a brand is because, you know, it's like sometimes I'll even have a Zoom meeting with someone because we do everything from home. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm just ready to go meet them in my scarf. And, and I'm like, oh, oh, no, 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 Amanda, that's part of your brand. Put on the wig, put some makeup on. You got to present. <laughs> <laughs> The best way that I've been able to describe it to people when you're talking about specifically about personal brands, um, not as much with companies, but is that we're all multifaceted diamonds, mm -hmm. right? And that some of these aspects are what we want to put in the sun and others are in the shadows for a reason. So we may not be only what we project, but we need to be mindful about it. So what aspects are we putting out there for what reason? You know, if you're wanting to put out, you know, all these sexy pictures, what is it that you think that that's going to do for you? Is it going to make you more popular? You're going to get more likes? You know, it, is it somehow, how do you measure that success, right? And so when I, when I ha talk to people about personal branding, sometimes I'll have them inventory some of their different aspects and then have a conscious decision about what part of themselves they want to put out in the public and what they want to put in the keep private because um, it can then translate into the type of photos they're showing, the type of uh, voice that they're using. And, and it, it is still 100% authentic to who you really are. I'm not saying create a side that's, a total false persona. I'm talking about taking certain sides of yourself that you do want to build a brand around and be conscious about it. Yeah, but that involves not, sh like you said, that involves not showing other sides of yourself, especially if you have a meeting, you know, you're not going to turn up on Zoom with rollers on and going, oh God, I'm just at home. Because, you know, if they want to book you for a job, they want to see the image of you they have in their head, right? Because that's the brand. Yeah. I think it all just kind of depends on the industry you're in and what your goals are. Mm -hmm. Cause there's nothing wrong with being sexy. There's nothing wrong with being sexual. Exactly. Like there's nothing wrong with even com the commodification of your sexuality. All that is fine and good. But, um, for example, I have a really good friend who is, um, she's, she has a beauty line and she came from San Francisco and she told me it's so weird how everyone in LA is like always posting these like bikini pictures and stuff like that because you would never do that in the Bay Area if you're like trying to raise venture capital or something because you might someone you're in a meeting with might have seen that image and it's just kind of it's not what we do there and that's really interesting for me because I grew up in the Bay Area but I've been in LA for like a decade so it's a little bit different for me like now I feel like I'm from LA like that's LA has been like my adolescence to adulthood journey. So I'm more used to that. And it seems more normal to me to be more free or to show your body. And, and I'm not like as concerned about being judged for that as a, an entertainment personality. But I think it just completely depends on what track you're on and, and what you want out of life. Exactly. I and, and being from the Bay Area and spending a lot of time in LA for work, you know, working in the music industry and stuff that I, I it's I kind of have um, that perspective of like, well, I can still, you know, like, like you said, you know, show a sexiness, you know, to my persona, but that I all my my North Star is still business minded, like I still think I'm, I'm a consultant, you know, I'm, a, um, you know, a high paying professional consultant working in music tech, working in high tech, working in, you know, these spaces. And so I've always got to make sure I hold true to, to that to, you know, even if I get a little bit more fun in some areas, like with my lifestyle brand and everything, I still want to say that if somebody were to go and hire me as a consultant, that there's nothing out there that I would be ashamed of, you know?
it's okay if they know I'm from the music industry and I, you know, this or that, but I just, you know, do still have that North Star. And I think everybody can find that for themselves. What, and maybe teens are just playing with that, you know, where that is for them. And I think because their hormones are coming in, you know, they're, they're sexual creatures coming alive and they want to be, you know, to see what that's all about. But that if they have that um, North Star going, okay, well, I can flirt around with this, but at the end of the day, I'm going to stay, I'm, I'm not going to show all of myself on the internet or I'm not going to, you know, like there's, figure out where their boundaries are. And I think we, we all can do that based on what we want to be known for. So basically they need to, we need to circle back with these teens to when they're 21, 22. <laughs> 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 or they could just delete their whole Instagram and just like, I'm starting a new one <laughs> as an exactly. adult. Well, I kind of, you know, when my son's on Snapchat more than Instagram and I'm kind of glad, you know, because I'm like, I don't know all that they're snapping and sharing and it's kind of good that it goes away. Like, I, I know that some, you can screenshot, but people there, you could see that they screenshot it at least. So there's a little more control around the media with Snapchat. So I, I thought, okay, maybe that's a good thing that they want to snap instead of Instagram. And he'll only have like maybe five or six photos in his Instagram and anytime he wants to add one, it's like he deletes it. He, for him, it's something's cool about only having a few pics. I don't know what that is. I like that. That's kind of fearless because we're so connected to like our archive and our history. I know. And, oh no, I can't delete my Facebook page. I, that's all my drunken college memories just gone, you know? But there's something cool totally. about having, not having the attachment to that past and just starting over and be like, I'm going to delete this. I don't care. <laughs> Facebook, there is a way to download your history. So for those of you who do want to reduce uh, what you have on Facebook and don't feel like you have everything archived, you can do go ahead and download all that type of stuff and then start deleting away. I've thought of that too. Sometimes I'll go into my photos. I'm like, whoa, like talk about TBT. <laughs> There's still <laughs> past relationships, guys I never want to see again. You know, like, no, I'm uh, I'm over it. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> but or, I, yeah, I always think like, well, I'm single now. So it's like, what would somebody who wanted to date me think about if they were like scrolling through my stuff? you know, <laughs> or a job prospect, you know, like if somebody was wanting to see like, that's you know, one of the reasons she, like, I never go on online dating because I'm always, cause you know, I live in LA and a lot of these online things now, they want to link to your Instagram or your Facebook or this. And you just have this feeling that you're going to go online. You're going to put your links to your social media. And these people are just going to go and, you know, browse and, and there's, a kind of, for me, it feels like almost like an undressing because you feel like some of these people are not even going to contact you, but they will go on your social media and just look through you. And you know, the way guys are and some guys are, you know, they'll make comments. Oh yeah, she's kind of cute. Or, oh yeah, nice, whatever, you know? And it's like, I, it makes me not want to like go on an online dating at all because I just, you know, it's like, people do go and look at your profile. And when you work in entertainment, like Erin, you do, you know what it's like. <laughs> you kind of feel, I don't know, for me, I feel like naked. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm under the assumption that, you know, people are just, your Instagram is kind of your, your calling card now. It's so weird how it started off just being like pictures of food. Like, that's what I eat for lunch. I remember at the beginning of Instagram, I went to the dollar store and I posted a picture of all the shit that I bought at the freaking dollar store. Like, <laughs> like some bleach or some freaking towels. I tried some $1 eyelashes and I remember my cousin was like, let me know how those work out for you. <laughs> They were awful. I don't recommend, but I remember posting a picture of my dollar store purchases, which is like so funny because that's just like a sign at the times, like Instagram. It's now like you flex on the gram. Like you're not posting your dollar store purchases unless you're a, a content blogger and your whole brand is like budget lifestyle. Like no one's doing that, but it's weird how it has become that like what? Like this casual platform to share pictures has become my business card. What the fuck? Am I allowed to I say know. that? I have two. I have a business account and then a, a personal account that you have to, you know, ask for permission to join. And I find that frees me up a little bit, knowing that, like, so there's a, the one that anybody can follow, and then there's one that, you know, they have to request. So that helps. That's smart. 
you know. But I think um, relating to that, I I remember posting something about just the comfort of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, like P and, PB and J. And it got so many likes and everybody's giving me their recipes. And, and then I'll post some deep thoughts that's supposed to like help people with their life and like waiting for a like, you know, like desert in Africa, you know, like where are these people? So um, yeah, no, it's interesting that what people follow. Food yeah, but you animal. you know what? I think that that's like that really speaks to kind of like full circle what you were talking about at the very beginning of the episode, like leading with maybe like, you know, vulnerability or authenticity, like a story instead of like the fact that you got an MBA because that like that was emotional even for me. When you said peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I was like, Oh hell yeah. I love sandwiches. <laughs> we're all gonna have like, that lunch now. <laughs> we're like, can we talk about mac and cheese next? Like, oh, yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Wow, I think we're getting turned on. <laughs> right? No, but it's like that says so much there. It's like it says so much without saying a lot. And there's something emotional about that. Like it is comforting. And when people can connect to something they see in a post that it's not even like anything about you or anything like from the depths of your soul. But it's like this sandwich reminds me of the time like my grandma on the beach or whatever. Like that means something to people and people connect to that type of authenticity and it, it works. It's like magic. Yeah, it is amazing. It, it's, I think there's, yeah, whole, we could talk forever about just like the oddities of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to um, give a little plug to a freebie that Amanda and I have for personal branding. We actually put together a guide to get people started on their personal mm -hmm. brand journey. It's totally mm -hmm. free. So um, Amanda and I will share the link. It's um, just, you know, you, it's the typical put in your email address and, and get the download. Uh, it's a PDF and it'll walk you through. It actually has some worksheets that'll give you, uh, help you identify some of these things for yourself and get you started on being able to project the image that you need to be able to attract this success in your life. So we'll share that soon and uh, yeah. hope everybody wants to download it and get started on working you should with download, on that. They should download the personal branding worksheet because, you know, especially in today's world, you know, we all, your brand is basically your main calling card and it is the way you present yourself to the world. So when you, the world people, you know, when you, you're trying to interview for a new job or you're trying to get new clients, basically your brand is part of your ecosystem it's the it's the it's the leading calling is the lead calling card so definitely download our branding template sheet whatever you call it american english um you know <laughs> and, and i love yes i love what you said too about you know um it being authentic to you and finding your own tribe because if you put yourself out there if you, if you have a consciousness about what you want to create and put out there the right people get attracted in. You don't exactly. want the other people, you know, let them go. It's okay. You don't have to have everybody. Just the ones that really resonate with what you're vibing on. And that's going to help you have a mindset of being enough. You know, we don't need to have millions of followers to be successful. We need to just have the right people in our lives, right? Yeah. That's Everybody. so true. That's a really good lesson too, just overall. Just the fact that you don't need everything. You just need the right things that's and that's right. and yeah. it'll be attracted yeah. in when you're authentic and you're putting that out there with consciousness and that was 2020 so. for me it made me realize i don't need everything i just need the right thing so you boiled it down there erin that was exactly 2020 it just made me realize that you just need to work on the things you work on it you know they work out the way they work out for you it doesn't have to be that person's experience and you just have the people you have in your life and just live that's it so powerful. Yeah, it is. And it gives you a focus because we don't have time to do everything well, right? So when we have all these projects on deck and all these, you know, things to create, we may not be showing up as our best selves with all of them. So, you know, pick some of those paths, prioritize, give yourself a break, do things really well, you know, whatever it is that you do do and, you know, and then see what gets attracted based on that. Wow. That's magical. Yeah, it's magical. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Thank you for coming on the podcast. And I know you're going to right. an amazing weekend this weekend. I don't know where you're going. Me? Yeah, I thought you were going away oh, somewhere for the weekend. I'm going wine tasting. 
Oh, nice. I'm recording a podcast in Impasso Robles. And I just decided to make a weekend out of it. And my dad's actually coming. So I'm going to see family that I haven't really been able to see and drink wine. And then, you know, also kind of, I don't know. I'm just kind of excited to have a weekend, like a proper weekend off. Because as you guys know, we haven't been able to travel or make plans and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Most of us haven't. So I'm, you know, I'm vaxxed and I'm ready to go. You're (laughs) vaxxed ready to go. And where can yeah. people find you, Erin? It does feel good to be able to roam the earth more safely now, you know, without that fear. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And Amanda, you as well. Yeah. And where can people find you, Erin? You guys can find me at Hot Pizza Ass Podcast, Spotify, and also iTunes and all the places. But a Hot Pizza Ass on Instagram if you want some inspiration there. You can follow me personally at Darling with four H's on Instagram or on Twitter at Aaron A. Darling. But I'm not as fun there, let's be honest. Or you can follow my TikTok called It's Conspiracy Seriously, where I debunk pop culture conspiracies. Oh, wow. And uh, that's a fun community there, too. So there's lots of ways to connect with me. And thank you, ladies, so much for having this conversation and for inviting me on your podcast that I am completely obsessed with. And thank you for gracing me with your awesome presence. This has been so yeah. much fun. <laughs> oh, it, it was a good cast. It's our honor, honey. You're amazing. Yeah. Your dynamic personality doing so much with such a great high vibration and just super, super honored to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Say, I feel the same way about you both. Yeah. yeah. And that said, kisses and bye to everyone from Beauty and the Beat. <laughs> oh.